Okay, so today we're going to start with proving triangles congruent. So previously we were told they were congruent, and then we were allowed to kind of line up corresponding pieces. Now they're going to say, okay, are they congruent? And if so, how or why? So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using the definition of congruent figures. Because remember, congruent figures have sides and angles that are congruent. And for today, we're going to be using the side lengths of triangles. So like I said, we're going to be proving triangles congruent. Now there are like five different ways that you can prove triangles congruent. Today we're just going to be using one of them and then we'll build on from here. The one we're going to be using today is side, 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 or we abbreviate it with SSS. So side, 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 you can kind of probably um, see that it's going to be when three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle. That's why it's called side, side, side. When all three sides of one are congruent to all three sides of the other, then the two triangles are congruent. So basically you can kind of think of this as a shortcut because previously they told us they were congruent because all the sides are the same and all of the angles are the same. Well, now we're telling you that all you need is three sides. And if you know all three sides are the same, then it has already been proven that the angles are also the same. But you don't necessarily need to be given that information straightforward. It's just kind of assumed that if the sides are the same, then the angles are going to be the same. So side, side, side is enough to prove that the entire triangle is congruent to the entire other triangle. So let's see that inside, side, side. Side AB over here is congruent to side SR. Side BC is congruent to side ST. And side CA is congruent to side TR. Therefore, if we have three pairs of sides that are congruent, we can then say that the triangles are congruent and that triangle ABC is congruent to RST. And remember when you're writing this congruency statement, make sure your vertices and your sides are lined up. Now with this being said, like I've just previously stated, now that we know that the triangles are congruent, we also know that every piece of them individually, they're congruent to one another. So like angle A is congruent to angle R and B to S and C to T. So remember, it's a shortcut. So here you'll see it in a proof format. So we're going to use the side, side, side congruence postulate, and we're going to write a proof. So given that FJ is congruent to HJ, which we can see, and it is marked for us. Remember, if it's not marked, you're going to go ahead and mark it. G is the midpoint of FH. Oh, that's some good information that's important. So if G is the midpoint, then it's your responsibility to mark those pieces congruent. So remember, if it's not on the picture, you're going to mark it. we got to prove these two triangles are congruent. So it is given that FJ is congruent to HJ because it's given to us right here. Point G is the midpoint of FH, so that means that FG is congruent to HG because that's the definition of a midpoint is that it cuts the segment into two congruent segments. And this is the next one that you're going to have to pretty much familiarize yourself with and get used to is that by the reflexive property, so remember again, you have two separate triangles two separate ones here and they're sharing this side. So anytime two triangles are sharing a side, the side in common is congruent to itself. So by the reflexive property, JG is congruent to JG. So we have now, we have side, side, side. So now we can say by the side, 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 congruent postulate, those triangles are congruent. 
So a couple of things that, again, you need to take from this. One, G is the midpoint. So any old things that we have learned, any old properties are all fair game. So if G is the midpoint, it is your job to remember, you already know, you've already been taught that that means it cuts it in half. Another thing that's fair game that we just talked about is reflexive property. So you see how this side being congruent to itself is not given. It's not mentioned anywhere. However, you already know that it's a theorem and some, a theorem has been proven. So it is your responsibility to mark this congruent to prove something, to prove the triangles are congruent. All right, so let's look at these. State if the two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. So again, we're looking for the three sides. So if we have our right, side, 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 then yes, these are congruent. The second one, we have a side and a side. So all we have here are two sides. So this is not enough. Number three, we notice, okay, we have a side and a side. However, the triangles are overlapping. So we do have another side. It's kind of hidden. It's your job to know, oh, this is reflexive property right here. So this stuff is not going to be marked for you. You're going to have to notice it and apply the property. So yes, they are because you can use the reflexive property. There we go, reflexive property. So again, beware. You mark it, okay? You must mark on your own. So it's something you've got to remember. All right, decide whether a congruent statement is true. Explain your reasoning. They're trying to say that these two triangles are congruent. You see an 8, an 8, and a 9, and a 9. However, again, hidden, ding, ding, ding. The reflexive property. So yes, because LK is congruent to LK because reflexive. So reflexive is your responsibility. All right. Are these two triangles congruent here? Well, we have these two sides, and then we have this third side. So no, there's only two sides. Only two congruent sides. We don't have enough. We don't have three. All right, so this is kind of the other um, format of questions you may see regarding congruent triangles. It's saying state the third congruent, congruency, congruence, there we go, that must be given to prove that triangle JRM is congruent to triangle DFB using the indicated postulate. So this is kind of also described as Sometimes you'll see the questions as, what's missing? All right, so it is told to you, all right, they, you must use side, side, side to prove these triangles are congruent. That's your only option is to prove side, side, side. All right, so let's look. They're telling you that AB is congruent to ED. So again, if your picture is not marked, you are marking it. ED, oh, what did I do? Oh, A, I mean AC is congruent to EC. Got to get rid of that. So if I wanted to use side, 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 I need all three sides. So this is basically saying from this information here, what is missing in order to use side, side, side. And you can see that third pair of sides right here is missing. So what's missing as being marked congruent is BC being congruent to DC. If you had that information, then you could use side, side, side. All right, so I tried to here use like three different ways that you kind of see these questions presented to you. Also, sometimes again, what's missing, another kind of format is could say what's needed. So you're given that JR is congruent to DF and that JM congruent to DB. So what else is needed to use the side, side, side congruent postulate? We need this side. We need RM 
congruent to FB. Uno mas. Here, if I wanted to use side, 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 what else is needed? Well, we need this, these pieces here. We need to know that RT is congruent to XZ. All right, moving forward. So state what addi additional info, ooh, wow, really info, information is required in order to show the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. So you have, right now this is given, that DZ is congruent to YX, and that was given to you. So side, side, side requires three sides. What additional information do you need to know? Remember what's hidden. You've got to remember what's hidden. What's hidden, look, these triangles are sharing a side, this reflexive property. So again, you have to mark your responsibility that ZX is congruent to ZX. And why? Because that's the reflexive property. Now, the reflexive property is not part of what's missing. Okay, this is not missing. It's not missing. What you want to think of it is it's kind of like hidden inside of a theorem. So never use the, the reflexive property of something that's missing because that's not missing. It is there. Again, your responsibility. I, I've said that a gazillion times. So now what's missing is this side is what's missing. So what's missing is ZY being congruent to DX. That's missing. So that's going to be your answer because you do not know this information. All right, if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, which statement is not true? So I didn't catch this, but this is um, kind of a, a little ahead of us. We haven't kind of gotten there yet, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to describe it. If you're still listening, I would like you to put a heart inside of triangle ABC and a star inside of triangle DEF. So again, a star... A heart and a star, heart and a star inside of those triangles, if you're still listening, because you're amazing. Let's say, all right, so if we know these are congruent, this statement is huge. It tells you so much information, because what this tells you is that AB is congruent to DE. See how there are the first letters there? That BC to EF and this to this. Also, this statement tells you about the angles, that A aligns with D. So A is congruent to D, B is congruent to E, and C to F, because those, again, those are all your corresponding parts. So which one of these is not true? B, C to E, F, no, that's true. We just marked it. Angle A to angle D, that's true. We just marked it. Angle C to angle E. All right, look, angle C is right here. It has three marks. Up here, C is the third letter, and it should correspond with F. So C is not congruent to E. That's false. All right, good job.